Hey, <laughs> if I see you grab a fork while we recording, <laughs> I'm going to give you so much shit. Look, what did I just there say? Look at my phone brand, man. <clears throat> What's happening, everybody? It's Temple with the Cave Cast again, um, with my my guy, Big Mike. Sadly, y'all. So, I know this is something that's been you know going around for about a little bit over a week now. I say about six or seven days, and we just decided to talk about it because we've been actually busy with other things. But we uh. We thought it'd probably be best for us to chime in as well as, you know, everybody else that's been talking about it. And I know everybody's heard about Mind the Game. Mike, I know you heard about the podcast Mind the Game with LeBron James and J.J. Reddick. And yeah. man, I, I, I see you grinning already. So, <laughs> so the, deal, the deal is, is that they put this out and nobody really understood exactly what it was about, the reason why they put this out. But from what I'm understanding, they're saying it is to uh, push the game in the right direction, basically, uh, because they feel like the essence of the game has been lost. I, I don't know if I'm necessarily agreeing with that. I think that they are trying to push a narrative. Uh, I agree. I really have to listen to some of this because to me, a lot of the things that uh, Mr. James, LeBron James says, I don't necessarily agree with. Now, there are some things I do. I do commend him for. I do commend him for uh, the way he looks at the game. But sometimes I also think that there is a there's an agenda behind it for himself. Right. So. With that being said, I don't know if you've actually gotten a chance to look at the video or the the podcast channel itself, Mike. Have you? Uh, no. Like I said, I, I've seen like snippets of it, little parts here and there. I kind of get the gist of what they're talking about, but I haven't actually sat and watched it though. So, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to we've queued this up to one of the key points where we have been told these are things that have been said and and I don't want to take anything out of context. So I want to look at it for myself. I want to hear it for myself and see what I think as far as what he's saying. For some people, they, you know, they say that these are things that you should listen to and judge for yourself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to judge mm -hmm. for ourselves. Okay. So with that being said, we're going to go to uh, part of the Mind the Game podcast, and we're going to listen to a little bit of it, and then we're going to come back and give you our reaction to what was said. Simple as that. Can you develop Seriously. basketball IQ at the highest level? You can get a little smarter right. as a player. Can you develop it as a? You know, it's funny. Level? While you was while you, when you brought up basketball IQ, I was start I, the first thing that came to my mind. I started thinking right away. I was like, Are you? Are you? Born with basketball IQ, or are you taught the game the right way and now the basketball IQ clicks on? Like I was literally just when you was explaining that, because I come from I come from, I believe, great coaching. You know, from my little league coach, Frank Walker, senior, to my at the time AAU coach, uh, Coach Drew Joyce, to my high school coach, who was a former college coach. Coach Danbrot, and then my AAU coach took over when Coach Danbrot went back to college basketball. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I, I, I was taught the game the right way. Um, but the one thing that uh, those coaches always told me, they, they told me that I had a, a, an uncanny ability to process information faster than anyone they've ever seen. One coach, and this is, I know you're going you're gonna to smirk about this. <laughs> <laughs> there's guys in the NBA that if you call a play or a coach draw a play to one side of the floor, they can't switch it in their head and do it and say, let's run it to the other side yeah. without the coach drawing on the clipboard. Yeah. I've never understood that. And I don't know. I never understood that. So if I say we're running, we running thumb down, 
angle, but running on the right side. So because I have a left-hand point guard, he wants to come middle to a strong hand. He has the ability to hit the pocket pass with the left hand, has the ability to throw ahead, he's lefty, and also has the ability to throw back on the shake. But if I say, hey, we run a thumb down angle on the left side because now the right hand guard coming right, I've had teammates just like, oh, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Coaches always, every, in practice, we only ran it from this side. Yeah. Okay. I had to stop it there. <laughs> God damn it, LeBron. What? Okay. He was doing cool. He was doing he was, cool for a minute. Uh, and then he just said, <laughs> Man, you he was you cool almost you almost bit. got me. You almost got me, you slick son of a bitch. I swear to God. You know, here's the problem I have with this. Okay? Man. I I do agree to some degree. He had good points, like Yeah, he he did. To some degree, I do agree that he as with a lot of players who are gifted early on, right? I do agree oh, that sure. basketball IQ is something a lot of people are taught with, and I think they're they're brought, they're 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 born with. And I think that what happens is, it's not that they're necessarily born with it; they just react to things, their surroundings, faster. They process information faster, right? When I was playing ball, I was always taught basketball is a reactionary sport; it's not a thinking sport. It's really not, right? So it, it's kind of a, eh, eh, you know, because there are parts of it where they say basketball is 90% mental and 10% physical, right? So there is some thinking involved in it, but it's because of repetition in most parts. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily a thinking game, but you do have to be able to process information fast, right? Right. So I get where he's saying about as far as basketball IQ, IQ, some people are born with that ability. And I don't think it necessarily matters when it comes to what sport it is. I think they're able to process information quickly, you know, because that's why you see a lot of guys who are good at football. They're also very good at basketball. Now, they may not mm -hmm. be at, at, as athletically gifted in football or as in basketball as they are in, in football, but they can do both of them very well, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the problem I have with this is when he starts throwing his teammates up underneath the bus. What the hell was I, the purpose of that? Well, I don't, I don't even think just – it's not even just the teammates. He kind of just threw other players under the bus as if, like – but he did say I had I have t I've had no he did say that but I'm I'm more so talking about like in general like he threw kind of everybody under the bus because he said players yeah he not did even say just players. teammates that's what yeah. I'm saying so like and I mean not even that that play that he described like as an example bro that's a basic play <laughs> that's, that's basic why, like that's why I'm I kind of had to look I on want, my face I want to know. I want to know the players he's talking about because if they don't know that basic concept and, and then the just NBA, doing it on the opposite side and you're in the NBA. Exactly. And you're in the NBA. That's a little questionable. Talking, I I don't necessarily think that I agree with what he's saying. Now, yeah, I, I'm not I could, be, I could be wrong. I could be about so it. wrong about that, you know, because there are a lot of guys <laughs> that are very athletically gifted and they may not be the brightest students when it comes to the, to the game, right? You know, I, I think a lot of that is being lost, is to how to think the game of basketball, right? I wonder if he's referring to younger players. You know, I mean, maybe. And if he is, I don't think that's fair. Mm. But you know, look, but here's the thing. But you know, LeBron has always had an issue with younger players, though. Like he's never think about it. He's never like at least in the, at least until now. But like in his like prime prime, yeah, he was never like trying to play with younger players. He wanted experienced veterans. Well, yes. I wonder if that's that, kind of what he's referring to. He he does have a history of that. He has had a history of also. Uh, well, I was just gonna say real quick. Also, think about it. The last since he's been with the Lakers, he's pretty much played with, you know, younger players. And if he's talking about like you know how you said his teammates, he's probably talking about 
because you know he's been playing with younger players like within like the you know four or five years so i'm yeah. kind of wondering there's kind of if that kind of goes hand in hand you know what i'm saying so like i, I don't mean, know maybe i'm i mean i don't know that that's the that's the thing it's 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 kind of up in the air because he's not going to give you that information as far as right. who the player is are that he's talking about right he'll he'll throw him under the bus a little bit but he's not going to give names right dho driving cake the last one all right now let's let's just drive the baseline baseline drive drift if the guard if the big if the if the, if the forward on the left side is looking at the ball you can slot cut i could do that i was doing that stuff when i was like eight nine years old and and my coaches would just be blown away and i would just i, I wouldn't know where it came from i have no idea so to get back to your question, I think I was born with a sports IQ. Hmm. And it could have been any sport, but I just think basketball was the one that I, like I was, I chose. And maybe I was chosen to do that as well. Yeah, to me, I think it's, I think it's suspect what he's saying because there is a little truth to what he's saying as far as IQ, but let's be honest. He said when he was eight years old, he was able to flip a play, right? I'm going to be honest with you. I coached MEYB. I coached uh, some bitty basketball, and I had friends who did the same things. Uh, I didn't know very many eight-year-olds who were running a lot of plays and were able to just flip plays. Hell, you have a hard time getting a bunch of eight-year-olds just to dribble the ball and, and see exactly. it together. You have a hard time with them doing what you tell them to do. And they were running, and they were doing, like, elementary plays, like basic pick and roll. Exactly. Nothing crazy. They weren't trying to – they weren't worried about flipping plays and having a, having a player – uh, pass it off his left hand just because he's on this side. Like, they wasn't doing stuff like that at eight years old. If he would have said 12, 13, I'd have been like, okay, maybe I can maybe. believe a little bit of that. But okay, cool. Eight years old. Eight years eight? old? I'm not buying that. Eight? Because he's trying to make it seem like he's just so much smarter than everybody else. That's and I'm the not saying, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm not saying that LeBron isn't one of the smartest players in our, in our, in our game, but at the same time, it's like, you just trying too hard to make it seem like you just here and then everybody else is here. You know? Like it it's Look just not me. necessary. Look at me. Yeah, Look at exactly. Me. That's Look what I'm saying. It's just Guess not what? necessary. Guess what? I'm smarter than the rest of you. All yeah. of y'all I was I'm doing smarter. this at eight years old. I was doing this. And y'all had to wait till y'all was twenty. Y'all yeah, y'all exactly. this. <laughs> That's what it is. He's he's it's it's some narciss that's kind of narcissistic traits i mean but i think that's why this i think that's why he's bringing this up to like man but that's why but what is what is the point to this though because if you're doing this to try to look from what i'm understanding he's talking about trying to save or give the information on what the essence of basketball i'm sorry if you're playing basketball at any point and you have any kind of passion for it the essence of basketball is to compete you play to win the game hello you play to win the game you don't play to just play it that's the great thing about sports you play to win and i don't care if you don't have any wins you go play to win when you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. That's all it is. At the highest level. That's with any which, sport. Yeah, at any sport. Football, baseball, basketball, hell, running track, uh, wrestling. The essence is to compete. And to say that he thinks that that is being lost, eh, I don't necessarily think that's what's happening. I think really you don't think so. I don't think it's being lost. A lot of these guys want. I mean, think about this. People are born with this so-called IQ, right? A lot of people are born with a sports IQ, supposedly. A lot of people are born with the ability to do math very well. They don't know why they catch on the numbers as well, but they just do, right? 
Some people can see objects and they are able to do, uh, how should I say, 3D imaging where they can go in and they can change that image or they can see what the, other, what the image looks like on the other side without actually seeing it, right? Mm -hmm. It's the way your brain processes information. Some people are wired to be ultra competitive, right? I could, yeah, that's true. Because so, people don't like to lose. The thought exactly. of losing is very... It's yeah, one of, the, it's one of those that. things that they are born with, i.e. LeBron James says he doesn't, you know, he, he's, he, he has this high IQ and, you know, he wants to win and all this other stuff. And, and Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, we've seen it. Tom Brady, we've seen these things, okay? So to say that the essence is being lost, I think that's BS. That's just my opinion. I think that people still have it in them. I think what's happening now, though, is that now we are trying to change the narrative on what it means to be a champion and how much being a champion of whatever it is you decide to do, be it football or basketball or baseball, whatever it is as far as the sport goes, to be a champion is the highest of the high. That's the pinnacle. That's what we all try to get to whatever sport we're in is that championship to be considered a champion right so when you do that now you're at the sense hey look i did it at this level i did it at this level and i did it at this level i have done everything i have set out to prove i know that i am one of the best players or you know of this game regardless of what it was in right and I think that that is the thing about when you get into these conversations about who is the greatest or who's the GOAT and this is that, and then they try to dilute what the winners did. Yeah, that's a problem that I had too, because it's like... If I won... You know, people try I to... Yeah, people try to downplay winning championships, bro. Like I don't I don't give a damn if it was fucking marbles <laughs> or <laughs> right, I'm wins. the champion. <laughs> I, I, if if that's what my if that's what my my passion is in, whatever it was in, and I did it to the best of my ability and I became a champion and I was competing against other people who had the same, you know, passion about that same thing and I came out on top. There's something to be said about the person who wins, right? Sure. So make, making this podcast that he's making to push, I think, a narrative, and I think that is to control the narrative of who is and who is not considered to be the greatest player of all time because I think that's possibly part of the reason why this was made. Now, I can't say that for sure. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he uh -oh. he decided to do this, but I can tell you right now by just what he said with that basketball IQ thing and then throwing his teammates, former teammates up underneath the bus. It could be former. It could be, you know, present teammates up underneath the bus. It sounds to me like he is trying to tell everybody, hey, I'm I'm great. I was doing that. this at hey. eight years old. Hey, you missed something, though, that probably didn't catch. And I caught it. Remember how he's talking about how his coaches taught him the right way to play the game? Yeah. Now, what exactly are you trying to say? Because it seems like you're trying to say your way of playing the right way, which is, you know, how everybody associates LeBron with his past first team player. And then Michael Jordan and Kobe as this selfish ball hog shoot, you know, gunner volume score mentality. You know, LeBron think he's slick. He really do. He think he's slick. So I see what you're trying to do, man. Yeah. And, you're not and, slick. You're not slick at all. Exactly. And I think you, you, you hit that right on the money. He's, he's trying to say that his way is the right way of playing basketball, not the mm -hmm. way that Kobe or Michael. That's what I'm yeah, reading. the right that's way. What, that's what I'm reading into this is that he's trying to push the narrative that his way is the right way, and everybody else that did it before him wasn't right. So why didn't you win more? You know, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, let's be honest. If your basketball IQ is that high, 
and you were doing it at eight years old, how come that little light skinned motherfucker kept, whoop, kept whooping your ass? Man, you already know what they're gonna say. They going you know what's funny? Yeah, as a matter of when fact, it, it was two of them like it was two of them light skinned motherfuckers up there kicking your ass and well, going to stay. Well, here's the thing. Well, here's the thing. You know what they're gonna say they're gonna bring up KD, but these are the same people that shit on KD any chance they get. Listen. They'll be like, KD is mentally weak, he's soft, and da 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 da. But they'll be them same ones talking about how it wasn't fair because KD was on that team. Which one is it? But wait a minute. It was okay for LeBron to do it? That's what I'm saying. But even then, even then, it's like they, they'll downplay certain players when it doesn't, when it like to, to benefit them in the conversation and then downplay them at the same time to benefit them in the conversation, depending on what they're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you can't be like, oh, man, that team was stacked. They had Kevin Durant. And then at the same time, talk trash about Kevin Durant. That doesn't make sense to me. To make it make sense, bro. Well, what's also <laughs> aggravating about this is that it's, look, I didn't like what KD did. I thought it was kind of a, a weak move. We have talked about this. You know, I did. Yeah, I, we I did. Thought, I thought it was yeah, kind you of hated a weak it. move. I, I did not like it. You didn't it. think it was kind of. You hated it. I, I remember. You know, I'm just saying, I, I did not like it. Uh, I thought it was one of those moves where, you know, hey, and I'm a competitor. I grew up this way. He could have beat. He could have beat Golden State. They could have beat Golden State. I thought to myself, why if he would have stayed, he could. They could have beat them. They definitely. And and, and that and that's what I think makes it so irritating. And I'm going to get to my point with this. I think that's what makes it so irritating is that when KD did it, he did it because LeBron did it. Okay, LeBron did it. Went and made a super team. KD said, "Hey, you know." I'm gonna go. Do That's it the too. ultimate super team. That's yeah, he said. Oh, I'm gonna take it to he another said, level. I'm gonna take yeah. it to another level. What irritates me about today's players when it comes down to this is that, hey, you know, if y'all want to talk and consider somebody to be the go, and you want to put LeBron James in that category, okay. Ask yourself this: Would he have been more of a go if he'd have stayed in Cleveland and worked it? to where he got to a point where now he could actually win championships on a regular basis and never left Cleveland and put them in a situation to where now they were able to three-peat at one point or another. Or not. let's say he didn't even three-peat. Let's say he wins two championships there, goes two years, doesn't win, two, doesn't win for a while, and then comes back and wins again. Would you have considered him to be more in that conversation as the GOAT by staying in Cleveland and winning there from the jump because to me when what Michael did is so much more impressive because he stayed in Chicago even when they were bad no matter yeah, what he, he, and he had he no dealt, control he, <clears throat> he had no control yeah, he, over, over who they who they got with that pick with Scottie Pippen nobody knew Scottie Pippen was going to be what he was going to be it just happened. And that's another thing. It just happened hold to be on, that Hold way. on. I have to say this. For all you LeBron fans that swear up and down that Scottie Pippen was this next level, you know, draft pick, and he was just he was he was gonna be that regardless, you're fooling yourselves. My, Michael Jordan made Scottie Pippen. I don't care what nobody say. He learned from Mike. His mentality came from Mike. The way he played defense, where do you think he got that from, that mentality? It's not about just his ability because Scotty always had the ability to do it. Yeah. But it's the mentality to stay because defense is all about effort. Who do you think instilled that in him? He didn't come out the gate doing that. I mean, it took he, him a few years. He had the ability, but the thing was is that Yeah, he, he had the tools. Him. Yeah, <clears throat> he had the him. tools to do it. Yeah, it all it all started with Mike. I, I'm I'm really tired of people saying that, bro. Yeah. It starts and ends with Mike. Mike is the reason why Scotty became what he became. Yeah, and if he wouldn't says, have, he wouldn't have been what he did. Yeah, exactly. He wouldn't anybody, have been what he was without Mike. Period. Yeah, if anybody says that's not true, apparently they didn't watch Scotty for the first three years while he was in the league. Because and this is the thing. Well, no, go ahead, go ahead. When the first two years, for sure, Scotty was not that good. He was he no. was decent, 
but he was only averaging about seven points a game. So a little bit over seven. So the first two years and then that third year is when he kind of made that process. That's when he kind of, yeah. Okay. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Dad, here's the thing also. When people say that, Mike was a Hall of Fame player before Scotty got there. Let's exactly. get this correct. Let's yeah. get this. Let's get this correct. Yeah. Mike was a regardless. He might have only won one championship. Yeah. Without Scotty, maybe that happens. But what you can't say is that Mike wasn't already on a Hall of Fame trajectory. Yeah. Scotty wasn't doing that without Mike. He wasn't yeah. gonna be in no Hall of Fame trajectory without Mike. Stop it. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, and, and so it. that's why I say to me, I think LeBron's, <clears throat> you know, his his legacy would have been so much more greater if he would have just stayed in Cleveland and did what he did. I agree. So that's just me, right? And they were winning. They won sixty. They won sixty-eight games that year. The year before he left, uh, yeah, yeah, it was like it was like between sixty five and sixty eight, sixty six. It was right. something like that. Okay, so here's well, how the, would you leave that, bro? Well, here's the deal. I, somebody asked the question, and and before we end this whole, because I I, w- I didn't want to go through the whole video. That's not what my, I just wanted to hear this this portion that I had been told about. Right. Uh, the question was asked, right. Does LeBron deserve a statue in Miami, Cleveland, and LA? I'm going to tell you my thoughts, but I want to I, I, I want to hear your thoughts on this first. Well, let's let's get let's let's get something. It's a fuck no in LA. <laughs> he better not get no. He better not get no statue in LA. Wait a minute. So you telling me? And look, I get it. They won a championship. Uh, now, that's for fine. context. I, for context, y'all y'all do understand that man right there is a Laker fan. He, he's oh a yeah, Laker I'm a diehard. I'm a diehard Laker fan. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. Yes, they won a championship. That's fine. Great. Love it. Here's the yeah. thing. The Lakers have missed the playoffs. How many times since he's been there? Three times. Yeah. And they're on the verge of of missing it this year too. And then they got bounced in the first round. Okay, hold on. It might be two times. I'm trying to remember. Because LeBron got there in 2020 or 19. They I think it was 19. They didn't make it the first year. That they didn't make it the first year. They they won in 2020. Yeah. They lost the next year in the playoffs. And then they didn't make it like the next two seasons. And then, yeah, it's something like that. But they missed the playoffs at least two or three times. On the yeah. verge of missing it again this year. And then they got bounced in the second round, got bounced in the conference finals last year. So you can't sit here and tell me that this man deserves a statue. He's done way more losing than winning in L.A. So what are we talking about? So uh, I, I, listen, I totally, I totally I, He can have one in Cleveland. He, yeah. should, he should definitely get one in Cleveland. That's a, that's a no-brainer. One. Yeah, he should definitely yeah. get one in Cleveland. That's a no-brainer. He brought them their first championship. That's a no-brainer. Miami, I don't know. I honestly okay. don't know. And I'm not even trying to be funny. I honestly don't know. They better not build one before Wade, though. Okay, so there's there here's here's the here's Wade, my... that's Wade County. Let's get this correct. And, 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 okay, this... no. They shouldn't. Now that I think about it, no, they shouldn't. And that's because what I was Miami what... is Dwayne Wade. Period. That's what I was so, gonna say. No. To me, I think it's a no-brainer. He gets one in Cleveland. You give him one in yes. Cleveland, that's where he deserves it at, right? You can't go giving him one in Miami when Dwayne Wade has it's three Miami. rings in Miami. He won before LeBron got there. That's Wade County. When you so, think of the Miami Heat, you think of Dwayne Wade. He's the face. Period. He's the face of that franchise. Period. Right? So you don't give him one in Miami, and if you do, you are being a stupid. And you better boy. not. If you do, You're you better not do boy. it before you give it to Dwayne Wade. I no, exactly. It should never happen, in my in my opinion. It should never happen. Yeah, I don't think it should. It either. should never happen in L.A. either, because he oh, has. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that championship. Jenny, that hey, if Jenny, if Jenny Buzz gives this man a statue, you know what? She might just do it. She might just do it, and I'm gonna tell you right now, they will deface. And tear up that day. I, I I'm a Celtics fan, and I'm telling I you, think I LA, LA, LA is going to riot. Yes, 
They were like, y'all took y'all took forever to build a fucking statue of Kobe, but yet you want to build one immediately? No. They were Bro. Could you imagine if he ret- let's say he retired, let's say he retired next year, just for the sake of conversation. And they built him a statue with like within the like two years or three years. Bro. The disrespect. Man. The Ooh. disrespect. And that's another thing, like I feel like because I've 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 even seen people that say that LeBron is he's a top five Laker of all time, even above Kobe, and I'm just like, what? Oh my! How easily we forget what these people who won championships for us did. The disrespect. The you, disrespect do you realize man. what Kobe did for that franchise? And you want to no. Look and like and look, you know I love Shaq, but he didn't do what Kobe did for LA. I mean, he did, he did, he did, he because did. But think, I'm saying, think about it. It took them but, since 1987. I think 87 was the last time they won a chip. So th- that, Kobe won five rings in LA. True, true, but it wasn't until. Shaq and Kobe got together and well, they, obviously, yeah. yeah, you know, so I'm not even uh, to me. I, I think Shaq should have got that, you know, that statue. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. He <laughs> definitely should have a statue. I'm not saying that. So he should definitely have a statue. I'm just saying, like, I feel like the only person you could ever put even ahead of Kobe is probably magic. Yeah. And that's the only reason. That's yeah. the only one I see you could put ahead of, as far as like being a Laker, not Kareem. So, for sure. Not not uh whoever else you want to put in there, Will. No. Hell no. no. It's either it's either Kobe and Magic or Magic and Kobe. It's one of the two. So with that being said, I just wanted to get your take and I wanted to give uh the people out there who hadn't maybe seen this portion. I mean, a lot of I'm sure a lot of people have, and everybody has their own opinion about what was said and how it was said, you know, and what he possibly right. meant. You know, I can tell you right now, I only take into consideration what I hear. And what I heard, part of it was good. I do agree to some extent. Some he of started it, off good. He started <laughs> off good. But the rest of it, I thought was, I thought it was kind of uh I thought it was me, kind me, of, me, 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 me. I thought it was kind of narcissistic. He like an only child, right? Matter of fact, he is an only child. You know how only yeah. chi- the only child always wants his way or wants the attention, and it's all about him. And yeah, that, if you don't know, instead of doing these podcasts, he need to be worried about. You know, <laughs> how about you? How about you get into the playoffs, man? And quit trying to change the narrative of how things are supposed to go. Let the people decide. Just my take. Anyway, with that being said, we're going to end this uh, this video today. We want to tell everybody, hey, look, if you have a good time coming on our channel and watching what us, you know, what we decide to discuss that day, uh, some of our topics, you know, you may uh, you may agree with some of our topics. You may say, hey, I di- I didn't agree with it. You may like everything you see about us, but whatever it is. We love to hear from everybody that watches our show. So if you would hit the like and subscribe button that you'll see down here at the bottom, leave us a comment, share our page or share our, uh, our channel. As far as our videos go, we'd love to get more people involved and I'd love to answer more questions. And just so everybody knows, we have a special person I'm going to shout out. His name is Jaden. He's a younger guy. He watches the show. And Shout out to Bro, to, man. Yeah, I wanted to let him know that I do appreciate him watching our show. He likes our show. I, Hey, and, and to me, that says a lot, especially with, you know, me being an old man and this being a young guy who digs what we're doing. So I wanted to give him a special shout out. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you for coming on our channel and watching us it does make uh, an old man feel real good so until next time guys we'll see you guys again at the cave cat